So now, would you describe KOB as your big break? Yes, yes. I always say that I'm eternally grateful to Kemi Aditiba. She would forever be a fundamental part of my journey, a fundamental part of my career, because like I've said so many times, Kemi took a chance on me when nobody did. Hi guys, this is Paul's one on one. And yeah, this is Tamara and I am with a very talented. Ooh. And I also have to say this one, beautiful. Like, you you know her, you, you have to have seen her on screen. She's everywhere breaking hearts. To be honest, <laughs> I'm very proud of it. I am with Talk By Oloni. Did I get that right? Yes, you did. Woo! I practiced. <laughs> what is it, Vicky? Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. You're fine. Oh, thank What's you. What's the secret? I don't know. Some people say they have money now, so it's kind of like showing. <laughs> Should I send my camera? No, please don't. Are you well, sure? Close for the year. You can't close for the year now that I want to but send But I say I'm closing number. now. Is it not my closing date? No, no. You close after I send the camera. After I send Okay, okay. I'll think about it. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. I'm, I'm really great. You look like everything is so good right now. Like when I see you and I see someone who's like, you know, everything is just so good right now, nothing can go wrong. Hmm. Is that how you feel? Not necessarily. I think I'm, I, I feel like I'm in a phase of my life where I am literally experiencing life. Not, I'm, I'm one who likes to control things, likes to fix, likes to plan. But I've just given up the reins of control and just living. How's that? It's, it's new. I must say it's different and I feel like I'm just getting a hang of life um, as it should be which is experiencing life enjoying life and not being so hard on myself so let's get to the gist now yes. because quite yeah. frankly mm -hmm. when I am I like, ah, she's coming in okay okay and okay. you're looking gorgeous and here we have right. questions we are here for you ha, are you here. ready you're on the hot seat I said I will give you money <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say this in front of my Ah, uh, when you easy with the questions, <laughs> easy with the questions, easy face. I'll think about it. But everyone knows I'm not nice. Oh wow! No, I'm not very I nice. I didn't person. get the heads up. When I'm interviewing you now, this huh. is your heads up. You good? Uh, uh, okay, so let's talk KOB, King of Boys. Ooh, Prior King of to Boys. King of Boys, how long have you been in the industry? King of Boys was 2020. Um, I have been in the industry as far back as 2015. Yeah, I had my very first role in 2015 mm. yeah so let's say altogether that's now i've been in industry for seven years seven years yes 2015 to 2022 so far what was your first movie what was it with it was with um chris nng yeah um wait i have to get the name back uh, i have to oh, I can't, no 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 no. that wasn't the first I've, i did a couple of projects with them it was growing old. I can't believe I remember Ooh. it. It was a series. I worked with Joseph Benjamin. Um, Kira, no, Kira was on it. Um, this lady, Catherine Obiang. Ooh. Jibola Dabo, Ebele Okaru. Jibola Dabo. Ken Eriks, yes. It was a beautiful experience. Funny, I, I doubled as the welfare assistant because I just got out of um, NYC. No, I was just going into NYC. Um, and I, I needed to, to keep myself together. I needed money. So um, I was a welfare assistant, so I used to take breakfast to the actors in the morning in their hotel rooms, serve them their breakfast, do this spread of um, bread and butter and all. And it was so beautiful for me because these are people that I was seeing on TV and however I was, I was happy, however I got it, I was happy to be in their midst and just listen and soak in all the knowledge that I could get from being around them. Yeah, so growing old, 2015 was my first time. Look at you now. <laughs> you are not spreading bread and butter, butter and bread anymore. No, nope. probably Proud for myself. <laughs> Proud of you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So now, would you describe KOB as your big break? Yes, yes. I always say that I'm eternally grateful to Kemi Aditiba. She would forever be a fundamental part of my journey, a fundamental part of my career. Because like I've said so many times, Kemi took a chance on me when nobody did. And she, I remember once the first day on set, she's like, Tokwaya, many people did not want me to give you this role because, I mean, for obvious reasons, it's, it was a heavy role to trust a, trust an upcoming actress with, there was so many emotions that was going to go through the character. And it was not just about winning a challenge. It was that she really wanted to break the norm and someone wins the challenge, the person is going to play the role. And she gave it to me and 
she did her best to direct me but you know when you know that this is it the, the opportunity you've been looking for the fact that because i was at the point where i felt like i really wanted people to know that i can do this like i i am talented i know this thing i've gone to school i studied it and i have it in me but i don't i want to do more than just fine girl cute girl cute assistants you know i wanted to do more than basic stuff so that's why i went all out to my audition and voila kob happened so yes kemia Desiba, king of voice was definitely my big break or let's say my breakout breakout role breakout role yes and you killed it i thank god what was it like names all those people Ooh. Come on. Well, you know, I didn't have scenes with her, but I mean, we were, we were in holding areas a couple of times. To be honest, my first day on set, I remember that morning, breakfast was a buffet, but I had no appetite. Like, <laughs> yo, and we started with the biggest scene, the most intense scene. That's, it was a six pager script. And Ooh. that was the first scene they were going to shoot in the whole um, series. So there was so much pressure, you know, you would honestly want to build, start from the beginning of the scene or however, not just the highest point, mm. because whatever emotions that I gave in the highest point, it has to match for the highest point. Not that we build up and you get to that scene, just like, ah, let's say the energy, no ritual, you get, so it was so much pressure for me. I hadn't done anything like that before. The fact that you know that people are looking at you like, hmm. okay, oh, let's see what you can do really and truly, you get. Hmm. But um, working with them, being in the same space with Auntie Shola Shobowale, um, Titi Kuti, um, Efa Iwara, Efa is my guy, like my friend. And we both knew what it meant for us. We used to have WhatsApp rehearsals, like we would call each other on WhatsApp video call, because you know what, lockdown had happened that time. Oh, yeah. WhatsApp, we had Zoom rehearsals with Kemi as well. And then when we got to the hotel the day before, we, we still rehearsed that night. I still felt like shit. I was like, oh this thing it's not entering i'm not i'm not feeling it i don't know that i'm there and that was the only scene slated for the day that day like that was the only thing we were going to do what about dedication yeah kemi was like this scene means so much to her and she wants to be sure that we kill it and she just put us in the room she's like this room is small this room is tight so you understand where both of you are at mentally he doesn't have the finances to move around so this is where he is and you guys just perform she didn't give us like oh at this point move here or at that point move there she's like you guys know that you guys um, as a couple are fighting we're in a tight spot just perform and it was so beautiful because at that moment I, I it was no more the pressure it was you know what this is what i want this is how far i have come and i am going to enjoy it and to be honest that was one of my best enjoyed performances i literally lived in every single word that i said No, no, I can only imagine how you felt after it was done. Ooh, it was so. I remember. I um, if you watch the documentary, I ever had a broken lip because they, I mean they cut some some scenes out of the scene, and it was such a roller coaster. At the end, she gets really riled up and she hits him, and most of the time, Kevin felt, felt like it was not natural. And at the end, when I got there, I hit him so bad I broke his lip, and we both didn't even know because he. Ooh. I walked out. And then he, when I went, I saw it from the monitor, he just took his hand off his mouth and there was blood. And I'm like, no, oh my God. it was beautiful for camera, but it was a broken lip on day one of shoots. <laughs> so like the entire series makeup, um, SFX kept trying to oh. cover the lip because how is it that in episode six, What's gonna happen in episode one to five? What's gonna explain the broken lip? Oh no, no, no. It was how did like, you react to the oh, broken lip though? I felt so bad. I'm just saying. Like, no, I meant him. Like, oh, how he, did he react? He, he thought it was a Leonardo DiCaprio moment. <laughs> he said, oh, this is my Leonardo DiCaprio That sounds moment. like a fact. Yes. I've only been once I'm set, but that, yeah. sounds, that sounds very He's much just like that, I mean, he, he understood that it wasn't intentional, and we were both it's in the heat art. of the performance. Yes. But we have to be more careful. There's no insurance. True. True. Yeah. I mean, someone shot someone on set, so. Ooh. We're mm. not going to say that. Okay. <laughs> So tell me, you said you've been in the industry for seven years. Yes. So that's a very long time. And it sounds like, wow, 2015 to 2020 for your breakout role. Oh, that's mm -hmm. quite some time. Mm -hmm. What was it like? How did you get into this? What was the journey like, the challenges you faced? 
Um, it w I got into acting, funny, from school, uni. I studied, um, I majored in English language, but I had to take um, courses in theatre arts for my first two years. It was compulsory. But by my third year, I had made a lot of friends in theatre arts. I had more friends in theatre arts than in my department. So people didn't even think I was in English. They thought I was a theatre artist. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I still had space. So I kept taking more courses. And then every time they had a performance, they would say, I'll talk, come and do this role for us now come and then next thing I was playing lead roles in stage um, plays in school and it was always an escape for me from whoever I was I, I was just always being somebody else and I always wanted to go through the thrills but I didn't want to be an actor to be very honest I always wanted to be a broadcaster so I went to study abroad came back tried and tried and tried and I tried to get a TV I tried I started wondering what the hell is going on and then I followed my friend for um, a movie premiere. She wanted to be an actress. And I know this sounds so cliche, but I swear it's the truth. She wanted to act. And I just accompanied her for the premiere. And we went to meet the director and she had a conversation. I said, oh, come for an audition. So the day of the audition, I had traveled to my sister's house. I was with family. When she calls me, that the director is asking for me. And I'm like, why? And she's like, do you have a role for you? I'm like, I know what acts, as in, is it TV presenter role? And she's like, I should just come there. He says, and I'm like, I'm not back till next week. And he's like, fine, just come next week. So wow. I went, my audition was hilarious because I was laughing as I was reading. Because I'm just like, you guys are funny. Me, Nollywood, how, how, you get. And then from there, I went from doing Growing Old, I was on um, Everyday People. I just got called for Everyday People. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful experience. And I was quite skeptical because um, I grew up with my grandparents. So I was skeptical about my grandparents' concerns about me being an actor. I mean, traditional Nigerians. So I was very picky and, and choosing carefully what I was going to do. But the acting roles kept coming, not in the big ways, my darling, just you know, <laughs> office assistants, all those small, small roles. Yeah, so they kept coming and commercials, but TV wasn't coming. And then the moment TV came in 2017 and dropped acting, really? I'm like, going back to TV, my dream. See, I'm one of, I'm one of those people that from my very early years, as far back as I can remember, maybe seven, eight, I knew I wanted to be a newscaster. I used to read newspapers, read alongside Eugenia Abu when she's reading. That was who I wanted to be. But like I said, experiencing life, I saw myself evolving and um, understanding that, oh, there's so much more that you can be as long as you just tap and connect. And that was how acting happened. And guess what? Spending two years on, um, like three, four years on TV, I started to miss acting. I swear, I started to, I'm just like, Nah, nah, let's go back okay. to Nollywood. And last year I came, um, right after King of Boys happened, I quit my job at TVC and I went fully into acting. It's been a year now, look at us now. We're here. Speaking of TVC, I had questions about that. Okay. Because at some point you were doing both together. Yes, I was. And honestly, would you say TVC helped make you more famous, helped make your face more seen? Because I've noticed hmm. that in the industry, the more your face is out there, mm -hmm. the bigger your chances, so to speak. I don't know if uh, you think that's wrong or not. I wouldn't say entirely, so people don't go thinking that that's the only way. I would say that because TVC gave me a different audience. A very different audience people that love to see love to watch news people that want to wake up 6 a.m mm. to watch a breakfast show it's it's a lot of yeah, commitment Ex exactly it's the family people the the shop the shop owners the people that care about the news but people that are really into entertainment maybe not tv maybe not um a breakfast show but tvc gave me an audience it, it gave me satisfaction and fulfillment to be honest i really didn't care and not in a negative way what it was doing for my career i felt very fulfilled doing do you know what it is to have dreamt for some dreamt about something as a child and you are actually doing it it's just like walking in line with i don't want to sound so spiritual but your purpose you are fulfilling your purpose literally and you it was everything for most especially when i started reading the news all my days i'm just like look at you baby girl doing what you really love so yes it did help but it was more of if, of me fulfilling what I wanted than whatever I was going to add to my career. Um, so speaking of, because I, I really am curious, okay. you said you left TVC for a year now. You've left for a year now. Yes, a full year. And you're doing acting full time. Yes. Does this mean because this is a two part question now? Does okay. this mean that you have left because there's a saying that uh, come on for a walk, not be come on for life? 
Yeah. Right. So does this mean that you live in TVC? Does that mean you've left presenting? Oh no, not at all, not at all. <laughs> I'm actually working with um, a company right now. I'm gonna host a show really soon. Ooh. Really excited about that. That's big. It's the kind of and then because, like I say, I feel like I've said this so many times. When you are very centered, you do the things that give you fulfillment mm -hmm. and. In being a TV presenter, you have to know what type of content you want to put out. And I'm very excited about this show that I'm going on because it's the kind of content I want. Not that my time at TV wasn't great. I, I loved every segment that I did. But um, knowing myself better, I know the kind of um, broadcaster or presenter that I want to be. And this show is really in that space so i didn't hurry to go back to tv even though i did get a lot of offers because it was just not like oh you're out of tvc ah let's take you but it wasn't it wasn't a who is the next person on the queue no it was just i want to do things that i'm completely happy and satisfied with so no i am still very much on tv and i'm gonna be back on your tvs really soon so i'm curious okay you're really curious today all right all right is it you now <laughs> very curious okay so now you talked about how much TV means to you. You've talked about your dreams as a child. You've talked about how acting called out to you too. Mm -hmm. Clearly, how acting found you. It did find me. And honestly, found you well. <laughs> let me say. So I'm curious now. If you had to choose. <laughs> Don't do that, guys. Breathe, breathe. Come on. No. Do me. <laughs> it's so If different. you had to choose which one you would go for for life. Oof. I'm saying like if this is it, this is it only. Like you can only pick one acting or TV presenting. Which would it be and why? None, man. I 50 can't, 50. You can't put me in the friend. As in the <laughs> audience. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't put you can't do that because TV presenting and acting for me, they fulfill they give me fulfillment in different regards. Like in they, they make me happy for different reasons. And now I'm, I'm moving from just being, a, I'm not just a TV presenter and an actor, I'm now producing. I have my co production company. I'm working on my own content for my own YouTube channel. That's why I said I'm not in a hurry to do stuff because the kind of TV content that I want to put out is not the type that I see on Nigerian TV often. Mm -hmm. The kind of things that I relate to, uh, they're just very random. I'm so attentive to things, to life around me that I'm just like, you know, people really should hear about this. And that's how I start to, I started to work on my production company. So I can't pick and choose because on my channel, I'm going to have films and I'm going to have shows. So it's, let's just say that I am a content creator. Ooh. And in content creating, we create TV shows and we create movies. I'm not trying to hate, but everybody on Instagram now is a content creator. <laughs> Shots fired. No, 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 but I'm serious though. Influencers yes. are getting more roles than people that are that actually. Are actual, so. Yes, I mean, you know, we're having a conversation over the weekend, and someone said the way we pardon acting is like because he was a doctor. He's like, if we the medical doctors say, oh, I mean, he that that person died. I mean, you can't blame him. This was his first surgery. The, would would we take that? And I'm just like. <laughs> How dare you tell me this was his first surgery? He's like, exactly. So I should stop trying to justify people's performances. And I'm like, right. He's like, if you people, if your industry can just allow anybody come and perform, mm. we should also allow anybody treat you in the hospital. That should be a conversation for directors and EPs. Because they always think numbers and you can't lie. But the truth is, I also understand why they would think numbers. Because it's a business. They are out to make profit. As much as I want to be passionate, I have to feed my family. I have to pay my workers. So it's not always, I mean, if someone with 5 million or 10 million following is going to bring a lot of people to the cinemas, I would understand why. But we need, the, we need Nigerians to love the film, not because of the person in it, but because there's a good story. I don't think that's a risk a lot of people are willing to take right now, now. especially because dollar. Ah! <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> okay, so let's talk Nollywood. I've always been fascinated about Nollywood. That's my life dream anyway. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm curious now. Nollywood through the eyes of a newbie. I don't seven know that years. I'm a newbie. No, no, no. I mean, when you started. Yeah. Because now, uh, seven years will be busy now. You're supposed to be like, we're well, almost doing class. our decade. Ooh. I'm almost getting that, to my decade. When's the party? I'm sure you know. I say, my decade is in three years. I'm still sure for the party. <laughs> I, mean, I like Jollof. You will host the party. Special Jollof look, look at that. You, you, you will sponsor. See, this, as you're calling it, be bringing money too. Oh, no, I think you're saying, no, I was like, hey, this is not. Are you 
be the money now. Wow. I mean, I mean it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. So right, let's focus. Come back. Wow. <laughs> These are you know they are presenters. <laughs> we circle you right back. Alrighty, so not even through the eyes of a newbie. What were the challenges? What are the chances in the industry for success? The challenges, the structure of the industry. Does it really allow room? Like, is it so easy for newbies to just climb through? And you know, you know, some people say IJGB is bam, bam, mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. And some people say, no, if you're this, if you're that. So, what do you think? What was it like for you? Well, I mean, um, I would say I'm one of the people who, who worked. I did the auditions. If you if you are an actor, you would know that you must have seen me at auditions. I did the auditions, like the whole nine yards. It was it was um it was a lot of 3 a.m. in the morning, a lot of um, standing at buildings with security men because they're not letting you in because you came too early. But you have to come early because if you don't come early, you uh, it was it was a structure that I set up for myself that after I went for one audition, the audition was for 8 a.m. and I got there past seven and I was number 200 or something. Mm. That was my first Tinsel audition. And I was like, oh no, no, no. And then my friend was telling me, oh no, Toko, you have to come early, like 4 a.m., 5 a.m. And I'm like, are you serious? So, and then I, I had like my starter kit. I had my audition dress. I went, got my friend was a makeup artist to do makeup for me. I went to the studio, took really nice headshots. I went on Google to find headshot ideas. I had, because I felt like if I'm going to beat so many people to this, I should have a plan to stand out. So I always made sure, because you have to go with a headshot or, or they'll ask for five by seven headshots or five by seven full picture. So I had a really beautiful headshot, no smiles, beautiful headshot, smiles, then a full shot with my red dress, my winning red dress. <laughs> and then I would go ready with my monologue from my favorite show or whatever it was that I felt was gonna go with what they were looking for at the time. So there was a structure that I set that make, made me make sure that I'm always there early enough to be among the first five or first 10. Ooh. Because I put my mind into to think that if I'm the one going to audition these people and there are 100 people, how attentive would I really be past the 20th person? I would be stressed, I'll be distracted, my phone will ring, someone will text me, someone might be performing right. So I thought that if I wanted to be memorable, I have to do something that would make me stand out. So I had like my starter kit and I always got to auditions early did my auditions, made sure that I aced it. Because you know, it's not just about, um, it's not just about showing up. You have to come correct. Like you, well, after performing, would you hire you? You get, I wouldn't go, I didn't think that to do a phone call audition. Like I would watch, you're watching films. There's some scenes that hit you and you're just like, ah, this has to be my next audition. And I go right in the lines. Mm. I go right in the lines to perform because I, I love performing. It's, it's a beautiful escape from, reality and the ability to be somebody else i i don't think anything beats that for me yes i hope i've answered i think i've answered one of your questions in that bulk of questions you said something chances for success what was yes. the journey like um, okay so it, it wasn't easy to be very honest but i made sure that i went into other things like a friend of mine called me yesterday and was like oh they had this fair and there was a time i, I started a business which is still on now i started to sell jewelry because Work wasn't coming as much and I had to feed because I left my family to come to Lagos to um, have a career here. So I had to look for alternative means of income. I had to start doing commercials, um, any work, not any work, but any creative work that I could get. So the money that didn't come in as much as expected because I've come to understand that Nollywood as with any other industry is a growth process. So you're literally, you're sowing your seeds and, and at some point it's going to start to come out. The, the trees, the like beans, you know how it takes a very long time. But the moment that leaf comes out, because sorry, I grew up my granddad who's a farmer. <laughs> the moment that leaf comes, it's it's celebration. You put in your manure and you're just gonna water it. And now you, because there's, there's um, proof, there's, there's something coming out. So you know that it's gonna work. But up until then, you just have to have faith. And that's what it was for me. I just had faith that this which I have believed that I, I can do, I'm gonna make sure that I'm so great at it that when the opportunity comes, I would ace it so that success would be inevitable. So yes, chances of success. Where Nollywood is at now, I think it's a beautiful place and it's very good for anybody who wants to come into the industry. You see, I want to say that, oh, there are no sexual harassments and all. Luckily for me, I did have a, a, a few 
but I manage them well because you also have to have those one-on-one -on -one conversations of what this is what this is for you where you want to go with it and how far you're willing to go what's compromised for you what's not what, what's what's on the table what's not on the table you get so that these things don't just happen to you and then next thing you're like oh I didn't know when it happened you're an adult think plan and when something happens you know where you want to go you understand but i think nollywood is at a beautiful place now we have netflix we have amazon we have showmax we have africa match we have so many platforms all like when it was in the earlier years that there was not so many places to stream you get so if these people aren't hiring you those people would and if those aren't the other people would and if no one is make something for yourself mm. come show us if you go to my instagram page now my pinned post is, is um, my audition for King of Boys, but I pinned it there not because it was an audition, but because I produced it. I did everything that I, I it's more like it was my film. I wanted you to see that beyond performing, I can put together a body of work that you would love. You get so. Why do we have social media? To socialize, right? To meet people. When people come to your page, what do you want them to see? Do you want them to see a slay queen? I don't have a problem with that. But if you're a performer, let us see you perform. Not in the two to 10 second skits. Perform. Carry me through a range of emotions. And if you do that and the work doesn't come, then we know that, oh, okay, just maybe. But I don't know that you will do that and the work wouldn't come. Because directors, producers, assistant directors, um, crew entirely are being so aware now it is not entirely about the numbers if you're talented because i don't have so many numbers i don't, I don't have up to 100k yet but because they know that okay we're looking for this and talk comes to audition for it talk can kill it and if talk does her best she will get it so i don't think there's room for excuses anymore now you want to be in hollywood just know your shit so you think the industry structure makes it easy or I ground. think the, the industry is still trying to gain structure. It's not, it's not where it was before. It's not where it is now. It's not the best of places. But we are not where we used to be. And I say this with experience. I say this with knowing how some people were heaven and earth. And now we have so many more people. <laughs> Do you understand? So the structure is, is going to get there. Like see Nigerian music where it was and where it is and they still feel like they don't have structure everything is is a gradual process i feel like if you live your life in that notion you will not be in a hurry for so much you live in the moment i agree i'm curious though what's your favorite monologue who my favorite monologue whoosh, 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 whoosh. <laughs> are you going to ask me to perform it no but i just want to know okay because you said you had your like, different ones mm -hmm. i like scandal Ooh. Scandal, Olivia Pope, to, if you ever watched Scandal, Olivia Pope's conversation with Fitzgerald Grant. I am not, I, you earn, if you want me, earn me, that one. No, 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 no. Okay. When she was pregnant, when she went to take out the pregnancy mm. and she came back and she just gave it to him. Ooh. Just, so I know I said you're not going to perform that, but right after this, you're gonna. I, I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to perform I loved that. I thoroughly loved that and um, I loved the emotions. Watching watching um, Scandal really helped me build um, range and mm. know how to move through different emotions because um, Kerry Washington is so good. I absolutely love her. And funny, another one I would say I, I, I like, almost everybody does like it, but I like it for a different reason, was Fences. Fences. I have stood by oh, you. Viola Davis. Viola Davis. Davis. Yes, Bella Davis and Denzel. I, if I, I, I've told myself I'm going to recreate that monologue and I'm going to recreate it in a very different way mm, I like because I, I, re, I related to it very differently. Mm. Yeah, but I liked the lines. That's why I respect writers because when a writer writes something and you say, you know, there's some lines that as an actor, you don't want to change it because you know, for the writers I've used, please, um, AD, please give me my line because you know why that, that word was there so i really respected the writing in that mm -hmm. yeah off the top of my head yes mm. originals every screenwriter would thank you for that oh yeah oh i love you guys okay um so now let's go to something a lot of people do are very touchy about they don't like to talk about but we think it's fair what's that the industry i remember a couple of years ago i think it was 2018 i'm not so sure 2018 2019 figure kate 
credentials that I feel okay because there was she felt like there was a lot of colorism, colorism. in the industry. Mm. A lot of people even started talking about that. The girl that said she went for a whiskey or somebody's own, I don't know if I'm saying the wrong name, uh, <laughs> pardon. And then techno, she there were a lot of people talking video vixens, everybody mm -hmm. people bleaching skin and right, all that. Right. Do you agree that looks, skin color, body type? Because you're very beautiful. Thank you. You are you are very beautiful. Thank and you. honestly, most people would cast based on looks. I think I think so. I agree with that some number. People? Some people, not a lot of people, mm -hmm. sorry, but some people do. So do you agree that looks, skin color, body type determines how fast you climb the ladder of success in the Hollywood industry? Huh. Honestly, I honestly do not think that, and I'm not even trying to be politically correct. Because if a writer doesn't write a role, a write a character, you are not going to get the part. So if the writer does not write an imagine a light-skinned person and imagine a tall, slender, curvy, the, the directors and the casting directors are casting based on the character Bible. So if the writer has an image in their head, unfortunately, they're going to have to bring that image to life. So, just maybe, as much as I supported the writers, I've thrown you guys under the bus now. <laughs> just maybe the writers need, needed to, um, or need to do more in terms of color. But now, I remember going for an audition um, like a la last month, and I was reading for a role where the character's age was um, 46 to 50, and I thought it was wrong casting. And I was reading alongside some older act actresses and I was, I was so uncomfortable. And it was my third time, like my third callback. So I'm like, why are you guys calling me back? I don't fit this character. And then I just, I, I was so curious. I went to ask the AD there. I'm like, why did you guys keep calling me back? Because I feel like, you, I, am I reading for this because you are trying me for a, a, a younger role? And he said, no, talk about that the, that the character Bible says 46 to 50. It doesn't mean that they aren't 46 to 50 year old women that look just like you. Because now, um, um, directors do not uh, they don't streamline to a certain type it is a case of if she has the range and she has the depth the depth and she can perform it and bring it to life and have the demon and everything that the character embodies if she can convince us that she's that then really that's what she is it is no more a look or a type it's performance baby it is performance. I want to agree with you, but I also know for a fact that sometimes writers write mm -hmm. and directors and the team, they don't stick to the script. True. So because things like color are not fixed in stone. If yes. The writer says, I want a dark person. The director may decide, you know what? I want this other person. And, and it could fair. also be that they, they, they got a dark person, but the dark person didn't deliver. Or it could just be that they wanted someone else. Yes, it could also be. Because that we have they... to acknowledge the fact that writers. As much as they do bring stories to life, they're not rated much in the industry. And the no, director decides. Yes. There's also the director's scripts. Yes, mm -hmm. there's a director's cut as well. But then I, I feel like it's not my it's not anyone's fault, whatever color that they are. And if you do if you do work on your skin to look better, I'm not don't get me twisted now. I'm not saying to lighten or brighten to just appear better on screen. If you say, oh, pff, I have I have acne or blemishes I need to get off my face because it doesn't look good on camera. That's good for your work because I believe that in in, in, in the corporate world, the corporate people buy good suits because when they're going to meet expensive clients, they need to look a certain way. So it's imperative that you as an actor also invest in yourself. If you feel insecure and you want to invest to brighten or lighten your skin, that's your own prerogative you get. But I know there was a time that that was a thing, but I feel like we're past that now. Okay. I feel like we're past that now. I've, I've not heard people talk about it in recent times, so... It's your experience, it's, you know. Exactly, yeah. Nollywood has you experienced it. Exactly, <laughs> Nollywood has I experienced it. Okay, so based on your experiences so far, what would you say are the two keys to success in Nollywood? Two. Mm -hmm. Just two. Two. Um, oh, there's so many, but okay. Practice, as an actor, I would say, as an actor, you're, you're, you should never feel like you're good enough. Mm -hmm. In that sense, I mean practice. Never stop practicing. Never stop challenging yourself. You, you see something on screen, you know that you can't do it. 
Go to an environment where you know that they do stuff like that. Go and expand your knowledge. Go to new places. Socialize with new people. Get, a, get better experiences of life because different roles, different characters come to you. And if you don't have, you can't give what you don't have. If I don't have where I can pull out that to perform, it's not gonna come. So practice. Practice means live in more than your confined space. Experience life in different places so that you have a wealth of um, performance to give. And then patience. Mm. Patience. As an actor, you have to be patient. You have to be patient with the money. Might be shitty money. You have to be patient with the work. You want a bigger role. You you don't want to be the office assistant. You want to be the support. I want to be support. And then you're the support. You want to be the lead. And you're the lead. I want the AMVCA. It's you get it's and there's nothing wrong with dreaming, but don't be so distracted by the things you want that you miss out on the things you have. Because I always I, I'm so thankful because I know that I'm not where I used to be. I remember the times I prayed for where I am now. Mm. And now that I'm here, I'm praying for bigger. But I'm not forgetting to be grateful that I'm here. Because it could have been anybody. But it's my time and it's my season. Okay. Thanks yes, so much. <laughs> is that how to say? Yes, Queen. I've been too old these days. <laughs> I call the the gauge, the AIDS. I can't. Mm. You can't. Mm -mm. Can't keep up. Okay, so I'm curious because I'm always curious. I'm You're always curious. curious. Yeah, I'm the cat. Yeah, right. That cat. Yeah, yeah that's me. Curiosity is you. <laughs> yeah, you get it. So now you once you mentioned earlier during this interview that you have a production company, that mm -hmm. you have a show coming. Ah, tell us about it. What projects are in the works? Come on. Well, I mean, um, I did a no work August. So the whole of August I haven't worked. I did this a film. <laughs> I know, right? It's economy. Yes. Ah. <laughs> yes. You're making money. <laughs> mm. Mm -mm -mm. What? I mean self-care self-care is so important i did this um I, I did this film in july with directed by james amuta black harvest really beautiful i dislocated my shoulder on the set i'm still doing physiotherapy for it and right after that i went for a holiday in dubai and i came back and i still felt like my mind hasn't rested because it was about kidnapping it was about organ harvesting it was really mm -hmm. dark and it put me in a mental space like your people are going through a lot in this country and i'm glad that we're telling stories like that so i did work on that project and i'm like i had done so much january to july i had so many i have films in the cinema i have the order of things i have hey you i have set up two i have sister coming i have dwindle on netflix i Ooh. have um oh um what's that uh, those are projects you've done when did they happen i mean i just did black harvest now okay so what else should you be expecting from you from me year? This year, um, my TV show that is coming. Ooh, um, the name no, it's it's no, it's NDA. Now they say we could sign NDA, so ah, ah. we're not gonna tell them now. Waiting, they do. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, I did get this really exciting email about a project I'm gonna do in November. Mm. So excited, but uh, yeah, that's about it. NDA is a it's, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> Sorry, no swearing. Mm -hmm. I can't. I can't. But if you do follow me on social media. And you pay attention to the things I post. You can you can have an idea of the things that I come. You smell it. Yeah, you said hmm. you'd be like, so go. <laughs> One like or two. Coming. Yes, and I'm very thankful. Okay, so what are your long term goals with acting, with presenting? Where do you see yourself in say five years? <laughs> I didn't interview you for a job. No worries. All right. I mean, where I see myself is like where I'm at. <laughs> I literally, I had a projection, I had like a spreadsheet of what I wanted to do and I'm like, why wait all the way, just open your company now, you have to wait till, mm. till then and create a kind of content. So I do, I do want to, let me say where five years, um, my show's doing well, myself doing well, mm. Hollywood, I, I feel like, not I feel, I know that transitioning will be great and breaking grounds between Nigeria, between Nollywood and Hollywood would be fantastic. I, I know that i have like a wealth of talent to give of i have a will i say a a well of of um, performance mm. within me and i'm excited that there's been such um will i say like a springboard you see um pga pastor jimmy udukoya being in king woman just shows you that anything is possible and i i've i've literally projected my transitioning but not leaving Nollywood because I feel like as a performer they can't tie you to a place 
because there's someone writing a script in California that has a Hausa girl who is 30 year old and comes from Lagos, Nigeria. And hello, hello, Tokwe, you get so. <laughs> Maybe I, now we we'll start hearing clean English when they're clean Nigerian. Nigerian English, English exactly. Yeah, so that and then making sure that my businesses that I'm setting in stone are doing well because I feel like at this point, everybody should understand that it's not like Nollywood is bad, but you need to have something on the side because it's not every day. You're not filming every day. And when you're not filming, you have bills to pay. Your bills will not wait for your next project. Says the person that did no work August. <laughs> <laughs> yes, rest is also important. Now what shall I be for you to do that? <laughs> this after this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm curious now. This is my last curiosity. You're curious the you're moment. Okay, right. What roles have you not played yet that you would really love to play? Yes. Oh, I would... I am already in the works for that. I, I remember having mm. a conversation yes with the director. I said I wanted to play like a thug, like a leader of a gang, something dark. And I didn't want fine girl. I wanted something really dark and really gory. I'm sorry. <laughs> something came to my mind when you're saying that. Oh, yeah. I didn't want to interrupt. So now you're saying sorry. I was thinking, ah, king of queen of boys now. <laughs> because Gangster. I mean, but you do know that I have um, Den of Snakes coming with Kemi Aditiva mm, yeah. really soon. Yeah, she did announce that, so I can say I can say that. And yeah. that is somewhat something I have a character that I wanted to explore, and I'm excited I'm going to do that. But I do have another one coming up with James Amota as well. It's a road trip. We're shooting it on the road. Mm. We're actually traveling. He says we're not going to shower for seven days because we can't lose continuity. I'm so excited about that. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing. When you watch all them um, Hollywood films, you don't know the kind of shit Excuse they go. Excuse me, I'm not pitying myself. Is you put that will be there with seven days worth of stank? <clears throat> <laughs> Would you pull brush teeth? Well, we go brush. We go brush. We <laughs> go clean private uh, parts. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm, what but do they then, call it when you clean and just ah, there's a rub and I don't want to shine. No, no, no. So I was watching this phone series and it said it's a horse bath. Oh wow. <laughs> It didn't come out from my mouth. I was your period presenter. Stuff, but, uh, it's your presenter. My apologies. This has been, it's, it's lovely. Seven days, no bad. Yeah, so um, yeah, I want gory stuff. There's one we're supposed to go to Kenya to do and it's, we're supposed to climb a mountain and film Ooh. while climbing the mountain. So I, I, don't, I don't think basic conventional type of filming, which I do not judge people that do that. I just feel like there's so much more we can do. We can, we can just go the other way. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, those are the kind of roles I'm looking to play. I'm, I'm looking to do something with Tyler Perry. I don't know when, mm. but I know very soon. I feel like I could be in an acrimony again. Mm. Yeah, because, because I, I like the depth his stories have. I like how it wrestles with your emotions and how it bothers your thoughts. So yes, deep performances. As much as um, I like happy, happy endings, I like, I want to do stuff that are very deep because I feel like it's easy to get um, normal happy endings, but when something is deep, it's going to take you to a, to a place that you will not come out of easily. And that's how, that's what I want performing to be for me, not that I go from back to back to back to back. I want to finish filming and say, you know what, I need to rest my brain. That was a lot, but the money was good, so I go. On a, I go on a no work August. Mm. And we will. She just there. admitted that the money was good. So <laughs> I can't details to follow. <laughs> I'm really. Um, from what you said right now, I'm yeah. so excited to see all these things because it sounds like you are doing something you love and you're doing it exceptionally well. Thank you. The way you want to do it. So it's. it's I'm really excited to see all of these things you've talked about. Thank and you. And like I said, you look stunning. Thank I'm still you. I'm going to send my camera number. Please do. I'm going to fire me and I joke again. Um, but uh, seriously, it's been nice talking to you. I like, look how time flies. It's I know, been right? such an engaging yeah. conversation. Yeah, very engaging. Ah. Very engaging. Our driver used to say, Omoto fine. Omoto That's civilized. the word I'm using right now. Like, you're so beautiful. Oh, and hey. clearly, you know your stuff. Thank you. It's thank a pleasure you. pleasure having you. So now I just have this last thing. What message do you have for your fans and your social media handles so they can, you know, kick it? Uh, yeah, my um, message for my fans and people who support me is thank you so much. I mean, it takes a lot to support someone you don't know just because you see their work and you love it. And I don't take it for granted. I love that you love me and I love you right back. But whatever it is you do, I want you to be passionate. I want you to be consistent and I want you to be committed because 
opportunity meeting preparation success is inevitable whatever it is that you're doing trust me it might take time but when it comes out you'll be so proud of yourself follow me on social media at talkware olonio on instagram talkware olonio underscore on twitter talkware olonio on facebook and oh yes subscribe to my youtube channel they say it that way too talk by Olonia because content is coming for you and coming for you real soon so yes you can follow us on Pulse Nigeria if you want to see all of this daily stuff full video will drop on YouTube bye yeah